Welcome, welcome, welcome over the top podcast. It's your boy HD in the building, along with the over the top podcast crew. Hey guys, like always, we definitely thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for tuning in with WDJY99.1 FM. Thank you for checking out our YouTube page, Over the Top Podcast on YouTube. As Q would say, also check out the Over the Top Podcast Sports Edition. Um, we may get back on that soon. We still have a lot of stuff in the air with that. And also, where you find your podcast. I think we're on Spotify and iHeart and Amazon right now. Is that right, Toya? Are we in those um, places? iHeart, Spotify, and Amazon. And, a- and Acast. And AK. So if we can't find us on the radio, you can definitely find us on those platforms where you get your podcast. Hey man, that jump in and introduce the crew for Black History Month. Told you what's the deal, baby. How are you? What up though? I'm good. I'm good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Playmaker G, what's going on, man? Hey man, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Jay, what's the deal? Um, technology, technology. <laughs> Take it over the That's world. That's where I'm at right now. Take it over the world. Q can't be with us for the next couple of shows, man. He out on a mission, a personal mission, but uh, oh, we we definitely wish him a good journey on that. Um, but hey, that guy, that jump right into it, Toy. What we got on deck? Oh, this is Black History Month, and we Black History in it. All 365 days a year. Nice. Here's Toya. I just want to know what the crew thinks about Fannie Wilson, the Fannie Wilson situation, and the effects it will have on the actual reason for the trial. Signed, Supreme One. That's an easy one. Playmaker, you jump in. You 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 get started. You on the voting train. You get started, Playmaker. What's your thought? <laughs> so, I, I think this is a, a tactic that we've seen so many times before in which, uh, you know, we're focusing on one thing and then there comes a distraction. I think all of this is a distraction from the real, the real trial that's going on. What she was doing, how she was doing has nothing to do with the whole, uh, reason for the trial, but it is a a distraction to kind of to take one person off the hot seat and to move the light over to somebody else to uh, to see if they can try to get a mistrial or something thrown out off a technicality. I I think it's just something that is a go-to book in America right now, the distraction. Ron. Hey man, listen, I'll tell you something. One of the things that's really powerful about what's the case is, and it's a lot of people who have aspirations or desires to do certain things. Money was punching above her weight class in terms of taking on Trump. She was generally used to kind of taking out racketeers in terms of like the rappers and people that weren't necessarily as organized or didn't have the political or financial machine that Trump had. Trump had a financial machine, and guess what he did? He started digging, and he found dirt. Now, the dirt that he found is not necessarily substantial, and it's a distraction, and and it's a tactic. I think she did an excellent job um, of quitting herself in relationship to what took place. She did an excellent job. Actually, matter of fact, um, firmly stating her point, the issue I have is that if you're going to be facilitating something that important, you have to make sure that your house is in order. And if your house is not potentially in order or something can be called into question, then you have to kind of fall back and think really hard about it. And like, that's why I say she's punching, she's punching to a certain degree above her, her weight class. He had a lot of resources and what he did was found things and also gerrymandered and created things. So what I'm happy about is that she stood tall what I'm focused on is seeing the outcome of the trial, and hopefully she will prevail and overcome. And heck, it's it's really documented that he did what he did because it was a, a phone call. He committed the call, and the call was recorded. So, with that being said, I'm glad she stood tall. And I'm glad she did her thing. But at the same time, for anybody else that's listening, in preparation, if you're gonna take on the 
corporate giant, be prepared to have your whole life reexamined. Fast, fast. I think you know, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, my my thoughts was um something similar. Um, she is taking on, she is taking on the, she is taking on the corporate machine that that we call Trump. And one day we had to do a show on Trumpism and the power that this guy done don't worry it over our country. But I thought it was more, you know, and, and we don't see this play, but like Gary said, we, we, we don't see this playbook time and time again. You come at me, I'm going to come at you. But what but what I found more fascinating is, and it tells it America, and we do this, and we do this all the time, we get caught up in the shiny non, nonsense stuff, and it, takes, and it takes our mind and our focus off the real issue. And I think she did a great job, and her camp did a great job, because I watched the trial. So her, the guy, and the lawyers, all of them lawyers, but they did a great job of coordinating their stories and events the, the way that the way they were protected. But I still thought that what he wanted to have done, he got done. Because although although I don't believe that black women, and I think plenty of black women should be able to express themselves the way they should, but D.L. Hughley, Hughley said it best. The most dangerous place for a black person is the way the white person's imagination. And when she came up there, you see, you saw her come a little, a little, a little angry, a little thuggish, but not thuggish, too hard to work, a little angry towards the angry black. So now, so now that if nothing else, they gonna prey on the angry black, 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 black woman doing the regular trial. And I hope that don't um throw another throw another smoke screen in, into the into the pot of the bigger picture. But I thought I thought overall she handled herself well. I thought her team handled herself well, and and be expected to, to, to get two or three more. Because his thing is, if I can postpone this trial to after the election, I may not have a trial. So as long as I can postpone it, he's gonna do everything he can to postpone it. But I think she did a great job overall. I just I'm just a little concerned of her coming off to 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 corporate America as the angry black woman. That's my only flaw. Toy, you wrap it up. The fact that that is a concern is still a problem. The fact that we don't have any spaces where we can be upset when it when the upsetness is warranted is a problem because mm -hmm. the upset, her being upset is warranted. You are attacking me in every way and I'm doing my job. And there's things that she said that I want put on t-shirts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Right. But that that's the main problem. And here's the other problem that I have with it is that us as a people should see that this is the system has been designed over and over again to take us down by any means necessary. Here is a sister who has worked hard, who has done her job, who is continuing to do her job. But you have to dig into her personal life. Now, ethically, things should have been put out into the open because in any corporation, any business, any, there are things that you don't do. So certain things ethically, um, she's not going to get disbarred for it or anything like that, but she could be reprimanded for it. So like Ron said, you have to make sure that every, and the fact that we have to do this in situations like that, again, so we're dealing with this PTSS. These are things we have to cross every T, dot every I. There has to be some level of perfection or higher than perfection. And that is draining. So I understand why she is drained and upset because now you're attacking me and into my personal affairs when this has nothing to do with what we are here for. But again, and, it's also the strategy. Like said, it's a distraction and it has distracted yep. us and it is trying to put everything on hold. This is there's being attacked in a way that she does not deserve to be attacked. And this is what so we do time and time again. So you're right. She won't get this bar, mm -hmm. but if she found in the guilty, she would be taken off the case. The case. And that, I stay off the case. So now you got another year and a half <laughs> or two years, yes. you're gonna be able to appoint a special prosecutor. To go back on this but case. You have that's to be why, that's in what stuff. you do. And then here we're saying that I'm working with somebody a certain amount of times a day and we catch feelings for each other and that's not okay. So I have to put all my business out in the street. He said it's not, it wasn't a secret, it was private. It can't even be private. You know what's right. the danger though? What's the danger is this, and it's high stakes in this sense. 
the political fallout relative to the judges that are going to be put on appellate courts and the people that people that will reside over election interference or things of that nature are going to be directly promoted over the next four to five years. We haven't heard a lot about judicial appointments this, this election cycle because Trump packed the court full. So what he did was when he packed the courts full, they essentially set up for the stage that we're at. So for Barney and the gentleman who's the other cases that are present in terms of not the monetary cases, but the cases that are criminal, are identifying <laughs> things that are extremely important to ensure that this gentleman does not get back into office because he represents the worst aspect of things that we can't imagine what it's going to be like and being and, and i'm not talking about in relationship to fear i'm talking about in relationship to people having functional cognitive thought relative to dealing with and interacting with other people it is it's bad now man like we don't even really realize how bad it is in these silos it's bad it's bad mm -hmm. and the only way to get this thing back left the center is to really hold people like him accountable and not afford him the opportunity to keep running roughshod like he is. And, and I'm going to say one other point. It's a little bit off topic. If you look at the Republican electorate in the Congress, that's representative of how everything they do. It's chaotic. It's all over the place. They get ready to vote out another speaker. Three speakers within six months? That's yeah, crazy. They the Republican Party has been divided into Trumpers and the old conservative movement. But and I don't and I I I don't I don't know how you stop it. I guess it, I don't I don't I don't know, you know, maybe I got a bleak, bleak, bleak future for the for the next four or four or five years. I I don't know. But I do know what we 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 need to do is is find a candidate that have our have our issues and our agenda at heart. And I and push for it. That's what needs to be done. Now, how we get there, then now that's a different conversation we got to work on. But we got to find a candidate that really <laughs> has our best interests at heart. Um, Toy, you got a last word, sweet. Uh, Gary, you got anything else before, before, before Toy? You've been talking, Gary, been quiet. You got anything you want to add? <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. You sure? All right, play, make all right. All right. I just want to say, pay attention. We need to really start sitting down and paying attention. And we also need to stop. Um, you know, this topic has been, it's been hot, you know, the last few days, of course, by the time this airs, you know, hopefully we'll have, <laughs> excuse me, a conclusion, but we need to stop attacking each other. The, the comments that I have read and just the, your life is your life and how you live it is your business. What you do, you know, is your business. Sometimes we get all into people's business. We're so used to being to everybody's business nowadays where we we are become, we think our opinion is the, the, the actual fact. Like we're our own statistic. Nah, that's not how that works. Your opinion is opinion. Opinions are like aspects. Everybody has one. Support one another. That is our problem in our community. We need to support one another. We need to have each other's backs and, and so that we can get back to the greatness that we once had. Thank you for the question, Supreme One. Yeah. I appreciate it. Keep the questions coming. Ask Toya, T O I A 74 at gmail.com or ask Toya on Facebook or Toya L on TikTok. Good stuff, T. Appreciate it. Keep on going. <laughs> hey, guys, like, like always, if they don't teach our black history in the school, we're going to teach on this daggone platform or at least give you some, some foundation where you can go and, um, Continue doing the research. And I'm always, guys, if you find what we give and what we're saying and our show is beneficial to you, invite a friend. Inv inv invite a cousin to listen to Overtop Podcast. If they can't listen to it on the radio, tell them to put up our YouTube. If they can't put up our YouTube, tell them to go to Spotify. Guys, we need as much support in this movement as we can get um, because we're just trying to make a difference. I don't know if we can put a, a dent in the cup, but we definitely can try to make some pro progress. Uh, so tonight we're going to jump on Black Wall Street and where it begins to get a little background of that. Um, but again, after the show, man, if you have any questions, contact us if you have any. 
want to keep continue to learn, continue to look for the information, continue to dig, it's definitely be appreciated. Uh, so Black Wall Street began when Democrat Bill Murray passed a law that prohibits blacks from obtaining high wage jobs. Um, through this time, segregation was increasing as blacks um, converged on the north side of the train tracks. This is up in Oklahoma, while white com whites converged over the south side. Um, out, I'm trying to put out the, the, the brother name right. Ottawa W. Gurley, O. W., a black educator and landowner and a businessman, and John the Baptist Stadford, J.B., as they call him. Uh, they came together and made the decision to establish a black centric community where black men and women were shielded from the racial hostility. Um, at the beginning of the 20th, 20th century, he bought 40 acres of land in Tulsa. On that land, by 1905, you had black doctors, black dentists, had a lot of practices there, the, the creation of more schools, several hardware stores, and Baptist Church soon followed. Um, but O.W.'s crowning project was the Gurley Hotel, who was highly revealed as the finest white hotel in the state. As hundreds of African-American emerged to Greenwood during this time of the oil boom, black residents to attend high paid paying labor jobs as maids, some chauffeurs, gardeners, janitors, and shoe shiners, also porters. Greenwood's black districts uh, thrived during this time, mainly because residents fed their purchasing dollars back into the local economy while earning their in income from the white, white employees. It was reported that Black Wall Street net worth was $150 thousand dollars which was adjusted to this days in time of inflation 3.6 million um would adjust for inflation playmaker I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna start with you with them I'm, I'm gonna jump out early with you as you hear people ask hey you hear people ask the question when was America great for blacks in this country do you believe that during this brief time it was one of those great times for the black movement so um I'm answering the question it kind of in, in sections. The first part is you have to kind of define what great is. And if you talk about the economics, uh, the education, uh, the sense of the community, then I think you can um, you can say yes to that question. But then if you say, well, what happened across all of America? If you left that community, were you still subject to, to violence? Were you still subject to... Um, uh, lynchings and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you were good, particularly when you were in uh in that in that in those clusters of areas, that community. But once you got out of there, things wasn't always great, depending on where you were going. So I, I can't say that it was great across all of uh America. I can't say you had pockets where things were good and things were moving in the right direction. But I can't say uh, during that time, because, you know, people were still getting lynched, people were still being uh, taken advantage of, that it, it's hard for me to say that uh, it was great for everybody. Good stuff, good stuff. R R J, I'm coming with you. What type of mindset do you think the Black community had during that time to even break away from the white power structure and start their own <laughs> social and economic systems? Um, a function of our community is that uh, essentially um, – the example that I said, I think maybe a couple of a couple of podcasts ago, we were left to the four winds to to really try to secure ourselves and secure a place in this world. And securing a place in this world meant that we had to really have a level of independence that was higher than most most groups of people and most cultures. Um, every every culture, every group of people that have have come to this this country, we immigrated here have formed um, segments of town or places where they, they they created a collective. Our collective in and of itself was extremely successful. Black Street was one of those collectives. Harlem was one of those collectives. 8th Street in, in Washington, D.C. was one of those places where you had collectives. Um, eventually, over a period of time, when you start thinking about some of those other places like Oakland, um, Oakland was a place where a lot of black folks gathered and they did some great things. One of the things that I watched in a, in a, in a, in a TV show that's a little bit off topic, but it's really crazy. 
a lot of those places were targeted later years in the crack epidemic. All mm-hmm. those places that I mentioned, Washington, D.C., Oakland, um, Midwest were hit really heavily. But getting back to that time frame, when you look at that time frame, we essentially were interdependent and dependent on each other and loved to support each other's businesses. And that in and of itself, cooperative economics, a thought process that really afforded us the opportunity to do business with each other. And we weren't we weren't sold this bull crap that we've been sold recently. This negative image, this negative self-hating image of who we are as a group of people. I don't know why we continue to buy this image that is sold about us, that we're lazy, that we're negative, that we're flawed. No, everything you see outside here in America that ain't a tree, some kind of way we've had some type of investment in it and we've helped build it. If you really reflect on it, Black people created inventions for the thought process to facilitate less work. Out of the stress of the mind comes the invention of success. So when you start thinking about what we were dealing with, we were tasked with being the burden bearers of the weight of this country, and we created things. So when you think about the collective of Black Wall Street, you think about the collective of who those people were, the collection we understood. And see, this is the thing that's really dangerous about what happened to us with women's rights, with 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 women's live and the joining of that with the civil rights movement. Somewhere along the way, we believed that we overcame. And if we believed that we overcame, then that means we didn't have to strive and collectively walk together. And that's our problem more than anything else right now. Interesting thought, interesting thought. Uh, very well, very well taken, interesting. Tori, I'm coming with you with this. We, we talk about all the time that the black daughter stay in the community. What? Six hours. Um, so I'm going to come with, why do you believe, do, well, I mean, do you believe that Black Wall Street is an example that we can use today within our community? Or is that, was that a one-time, one-time deal? But like Ron said, is it a it situation where we don't feel uh, like we can do anything? What's, what's your, what's your thoughts? Well, it wasn't just Black Wall Street. Like Ron said, you had Q Street, you had um, Haiti and Durham, you had Rosewood. You had all these collective areas around this country that thrived and all of them were destroyed. Where we talk about certain parts of Oakland and certain parts of um, Compton and things like that, where at one point Compton was all white and they sit neighborhoods through where in Jersey, you had Newark and they the highways went through, they put the highways through the neighborhood and that was their reason for breaking the neighborhood or splitting in half. And that was what was done in Durham as well. The problem, or they burned it under a lake. Or they, or they burned it and or they put it under a lake. Um, we see uh, Central Park literally yeah. was all black and now Seneca it's, Village. It, it's Seneca Village sits underneath a lake. Uh, Lore, Lake Lore. Uh, in Georgia, where there's a lot of deaths and a lot of, in Wall Street, the Wall Street massacre is one of those things. Our dollars in these communities that we built ourselves during this time, the first, the first part of the 20th century was just a thrive for us. Coming out of Reconstruction, also we're going into Jim Crow, but that when we talk about making America great again for African Americans, that this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about when our community, where a dollar is not, can go through our community over a hundred to 200 times. It takes at least months for it to leave. That was the problem. And poor white people had a problem with that because black people were thriving. And how dare they? How dare they have things like pianos in their house and build luxurious hotels for their mm. people to stay at? How dare you do that? When we are living down here on Cornwall and and pig feet, right. is if we can get that 
community sense back, which again, we all know that it was designed to break us apart in every way. When we have strong Black families and strong Black relationships and communities and businesses, we are at our greatest when we come together. And we've proven that. We've proven, we've shown just on simple things with movies like Black Panther. And when Black Panther came out, it was the biggest grossing Marvel movie ever because we showed up and showed out. Our dollars literally matter. We just have to get that in our head to, to know that our dollars matter. And knowing our history helps us to see that because this was the most amazing. All those cities that I mentioned and Ron mentioned were the most amazing cities and and they were organized. And it was a community-based and a family-based situation where we had power. Good stuff. Playman, I'm coming with you, but I'm, I'm going to adjust the question a little differently because I think um, a lot of stuff that Toya was speaking on, um, Ashley kind of go inside to the next question. Um, being that the condition we are in the Black community, is that type of infrastructure, um, like you say, with different cities or Black Wall Streets, not this in Greenwood, but in North New York, North? Is that is that what's needed to get um, our community back on track, or do you think that we already made it to an extent that we're good? What's your thoughts? I'm not sure. I understand. You said, do we need? So, so let me more phrase it. So, 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 being that they had the Black Wall Street where money stayed in the Black community dollars months at a time, then we took um, other dollars that was come from other areas that shopped in 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 that in Black Wall Street. Like I say, not just in Greenwood, but in other sectors as um, Run and Toya mentioned other. And looking at the condition of of our community now, is that type of infrastructure needed? Or do you think that we're in a place where we can move without it? And that type of having our own, because you know, we talk about all the time, and, I, and I'm and i wanting to admit that I think one of the things we can do is get, get take a state and all black move one state and we operating as one. <laughs> but that is my, that's my idea. Do you think that that type of structure is needed now in the black community or you think it's not? I mean, I, I, I think even to the, today, you still have communities that are, um, self-supporting and when you have uh, communities uh, where the, the black dollar is circulating, it's probably not as widespread as we would think it should be. But I do think you have those uh, communities and pockets all through uh, the United States now. Um, do we need more of them? Yes. Do we need to kind of have more of a, a network that connects them? Yes. Um, and, and I think the benefit of having that is if you can see things happening in, in one community and you can duplicate that and, ha and have it happen in other communities, then I think everybody can benefit from those things, those positive uh, communities that I do believe already exist. Um, so do I think we need more of them? Yes. Do I think they exist to today? Yes. I just don't think that they are heavily publicized as much as they need to be, or uh, people are, are uh, talking about them as much as they should. Okay, any other thoughts? Go ahead, go ahead, Tori. And so I was going to say, we do have, so in uh, Upper Marlboro, it's one of the most um, wealthiest Black areas in that area in Maryland, and it's a community since based. And the kids um, in the school are graduating above average for, you know, considering Black kids. And then a few years back, maybe about six, seven, ten years back, the government came in and said these kids could no way be graduating like this. Somebody's cheating on the test. The test scores can't be this high that somebody's, you know, we're not, somebody's cheating. The school districts are cheating. There's no way in the world that all these black kids and brown kids can be excelling this much because, you know, we just dumb and lazy. But that proves a point that there has to be there has to be some protection where we're trying to create these situations again they literally come in and try to destroy them again mm -hmm. so yeah. it can happen but how do I we stop the destruction of it all in in its sense of happening 
I think what needs to be stated though, and I think this is underscored, which is bad though. Living in North Carolina and living in Greensboro, but having my foot rooted in and growing up in Washington, DC area in the metropolitan area, a lot of my friends, man, are really just high school educated. But they live in 300 to 400000 500000 dollars homes. Why? Because there's more disposable income and the jobs pay better in that area. So when you have more disposable income, you have a better tax base. When you have a better tax base, you have better schools. PG County, I think, is I think Maryland is the richest richest state in the nature from what I from what I remember. And then PG County, I think, is in the top probably 10 to 15. And Montgomery is the third county, third richest county in the nation as I remember in past. So the, the coordination of that black wealth is a direct, direct, direct correlation with what those schools represent. You have communities like Fort Washington, Severin, Maryland, Laurel, that have parents that have decent income. And that income walled off. And that income facilitates better school, better resources. Facts, facts. They keep putting, so according to history.com, on the morning of May 30th, 1921, after a black, after a young black man named Dick Ro Rowland, who worked as a shoe shine, shoe shine, uh, work shoe shining, uh, rode the elevator with a tuss, tuss, a tuss of dressel building to use one of the few available segregated public restrooms downstairs. After the female, after the female op elevator operator screamed, uh, Rowland fled to the elevator to a rolling fled the elevator and quick rumors quickly spread that alleged sexual assault was taking place. The next day he was arrested and leading to the armed confrontation outside the courthouse between the growing right crowd and the black men hoping to defend Rollins from being lynched. As things became heated and shots were fired, vastly outnumbered African Americans retreated to the Greenwood district. The white group followed as the night unfolded and violence exploded. And the bomb and the bombs and burnt they bombed and burnt down the city. All right, I'm, I'm gonna come with you. Come, I'm, 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 I'm gonna come back with you with this one. Do you believe that that this time the white power structure was, was surprised or or intimidated by the success of Black Wall Street doing or Black Wall Street? What's your thoughts? It's intimidating. Um, it's sad to say it's intimidating. Um. One of the things that's identified that's a built-in structure in this culture of America, the thought process that I privilege, right? Well, privilege is nothing more than access. And if you have access, but you don't excel, that's on you. So when you reflect on it and you look at people and you can't excel, but you have all the inherent advantages of your skin color and access to various different goods and services and in and, and also monies and opportunities and you still can't excel, then what does that speak to about you? Mm -hmm. So reflectively when you when you when you look at it and that's that's one of the things that's really devastating. Like and people need to be informed. You know the bigger part of this is this. Years ago, I was in a class on undoing racism. And in that class, they, they they taught us the definition of what white trash is. And I don't like to use the word, but when, when that statement was made, the statement was said essentially, essentially that with all the inherent advantages, why aren't you succeeding in this environment? Hmm. And the GI Bill was structured different for African Americans who came home from World War, World War One, World War Two, and the Korean War. So all those built-in inherent advantages, and you still at points in time, redlining things of that nature, you're still not succeeding. So what effectively happens with these people is when they start doing soul searching, and and one of the best, I wish I could put this clip together. One of the best clips I've ever seen in in in, in cinema. But when Gene Hackman displayed that thought process of this person that we're talking about, this group of people, 
He said, man, if you're not better than, than the N-word, then who are you better than, son? Meaning yeah, that they right. had to have somebody to look down on. And it's sad to me that in all true honesty, if we go back to the, the, the original first slave rebellion, it was black and white folks in the game. So what we must understand is a lot of these things have been sprinkled in to cause division. And if we really understand the, the power of the fact that it's rich against poor, then we'll be a little bit more enlightened and aware. Folks, wake up. Access affords you the opportunity to excel. However, you can excel beyond your access. Now solve that puzzle. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Good stuff. I like good stuff. It. Good stuff. Told you. I mean, and we and we we talked about before. You mentioned the earlier show, like you know, every time, every time we try to build something, it's always being torn down, or it's always being bombed, or it's always being destroyed. Uh, what type of emotional impact do you think they had on the black have on the black community today? Knowing that every time you take, you know, you no know, two steps forward, you get not 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 back one step. What do you think? Um, emotional effect do we have with blacks today or trying to excel in this country? What's your thoughts? It's a conditioned intimidation, if that makes sense. Um, this These things that have happened in our past, for those of us who know about it, is designed to condition us to not try to be too as uh, overly excellent as far as coming back together in a community and and reform it. And I constantly say this, it is literally reverse Willie Lynch because we had all these great things coming out of, and it wasn't just an emotional effect. Of course, this was a massacre. Um, over 12,000 homes were lost, were burnt down, and there were a lot of loss of life. But when you think about the economic impact that it affected that community, and the growth that would have been. And so there was a study done when they had the 100 years um, in 2021, well, there was a paper written because it was the 100 year anniversary of the massacre. And when they did the numbers, and if there would be reparations for that community, it would be over $200 million. And what could have been done with that $200 million? Well, they broke it down. A whole bunch of kids could be college educated for free. A whole bunch of our kids. Homes could be built. And we talk about the housing. We talk about 12,000 homes. That's a lot of homes when you sit and think about the devastation of this massacre. 12,000 homeowners. We had 12,000 homeowners in one tiny community. And not to say it was small, but in one community, 12,000. Owners, black owners. How, where do we say that now today? Because of this, because of the impact of all of these cities being destroyed, the economic possibilities were destroyed. The conditioning that was done, seeing such harsh things be done to people, the lynchings and over time, put a fear where there was power. And that, that's deep when you think about it. Hell, it, it, happened, it happened 20 years ago with Don Frank. It happened the same thing, cyclical. If you really reflect on what happened with all those people that lost their houses, one, they, they, they invested a significant amount of resources. They invested a significant amount of resources to, to, to secure that house. And then in a lot of these scams where people were supposed to be the fiduciary of financially responsible people, Mm -hmm. They refinanced these loans, got arms, who had some of these folks that had fixed rate, and they and they they essentially like blew them out of the market. And so, if you take away a home, like right now, when I think about my home, my home is doubled in value. Like that's the one good thing about real estate; it has literally doubled in value. I'm sitting here like, I, like I look at the numbers the other day. If you're not known to be black. If you ain't a black person living in it, let's think about that. 
Man, man, listen, I, I, I don't, hey, the sca- about, hey Toya, about. the scale, I'm just telling yeah. you what the scale say. Like, my yeah. wife looked at a couple of different, because she used to do the real estate thing. And I'm sitting there looking at the numbers. I'm like, that don't sound right. Sam. But in all true honesty, that right there, that small investment and that sacrifice for that period of time could potentially solidify aspects of things that we may want to do for our children in the next generation. So if you you think about what happened in Greenwood, that's what we're talking about. It's the cutting down. And I and I like to tell people this a lot of times. I think when, man, I heard Minister Farrakhan say this, which was an interesting statement. He said, man, it's like running a race. And you got a ball and chain on your leg, and they have a five-yard head start. That part. So all, all knowledge and success is is the ability from one, one generation to pass that knowledge on to the next. And a lot of what has happened in that situation, when you cut away the wealth, you put people in survival mode. That's why it's important for them to give us college loans and to have us in debt. Keep you in yes. debt. So you can't and get it, and, 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 You're and in that's, bondage. That's the, that's the crazy thing when you look at this and when you look at those numbers. And if this have been broken down for all of those cities that are now underwater or, or the could have been imagine what the, and we say this because in today's time we would have had 3.6 billion dollars worth of land if we mm. had not migrated from the land or if they had not taken the land those numbers and today we are less than one percent of farmers those numbers it's like they saw the numbers they saw what we could do and said oh no that can't happen there would right. have been no need for us to be constantly talking about reparations because we would have had our own, like like I said, when we talk about the civil rights and we talk about and if Willie Lynch was real or not, it made an impact. So when you we got what, everything, I say reverse because I say they gave us what we wanted. We got our rights to vote. We got our right to be where we live where we want to live. You know, we got everything. But now it's just is legally being taken away. We're legally being killed. And it's it's the reverse. Give them what they want. Let them live in your neighborhood. You know. But healthcare disparities amongst African American women are high. You know, economic, you know, the reality game is different. It's just simple system things that we don't pay attention to, but have been designed and planned over so many years. Good stuff, okay. good stuff. Go ahead, I think one, go thing ahead, really scary, one thing that's really scary, though, is this, man. And I'm going to say it as quickly as I, as I possibly can say it. What we're dealing with right now is crisis of, of understanding. And I, in this country, a lot of the other people that come to this country try to assimilate into this word that we call white. And black people in the midst of all those things that our white have always created its own culture. So much so that our culture becomes popular culture. Mm -hmm. Think about what I'm saying. Hip hop, rhythm and blues, rhythm and blues, hard rock music. All those things in terms of entertainment, we kind of originated aspects of that jazz. The creativity the things that we've built that are part of this whole, and that's tying that back into the whole thing with Greenwood and Black Wall Street. When we, when we tap into our greater selves, we become a threat to that power structure. And that threat in and of it, it's an exit. It's an existential threat, but at the same time, we don't necessarily want to do to them what has been done to us, that's not our That's not our goal, most of us. Like, none of us really want to harm other people. We just want to be afforded the opportunity to live and be able to excel and survive and live it, live and thrive in our communities. That's all we want to do. At least I, that's all I want to do. I don't want to be at war with nobody. Good stuff, good stuff. Playmaker, that gets you back in here. You ain't, We ain't got you in a little bit. Uh, the, 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 so, so first, before I ask you the question, that, uh, go back and and what's your thoughts on what was said between um, the last, last few minutes of the conversation of, of getting back into Black Wall Street and take, taking back our own and how things was created? What's your thoughts so far of the conversation? Then I ask you a question. 
I mean, I, I, I agree. I think that um, there's a lot to learn from all the things that uh, happened during that time frame of how it was built. And I think that there's a lot of things that we can learn from how it was destroyed and try to defend against that as we try to move forward and, and build our communities uh, b bigger and stronger. So, yeah, I, I agree with everything that was said. Okay, now I'm gonna come with you with this civil too, because we talked about the economic factors. What? How do? How do you believe that? Um, that those examples and that was taken away contribute to the PTSS of our black community. How you believe? I guess. I guess. I guess. I kind of. I kind of talk out y'all guard. I see the smile on your face. How do you believe <laughs> that this taking this taking this over? Because, because, because we talked about the financial burden. Um, Tori okay. explained the financial burden. Ron explained the financial burden. Um, but, but we also know that post 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 stress slave syndrome is is, is an issue. Uh, by even you no, know, not even I'm talking about the ones that that break it out, not even trying to be successful. How do you? Okay. How do you I got you. Right? I think Toya kind of hit on that. Is that um, you know because if you know this, know this, you, some people get the idea that every time I try to build or succeed, that somebody's going to come and, and, and tear it down. Um, I think that's one of the good things about some of the new generation that they don't care and they just go out and they just try and are not being limited by the, uh, the P PTSD that uh, some of the people in our generation have been, been fed. Some of those younger guns don't even take those things into consideration. I don't know if you say they because they don't know the history or they just don't care. <laughs> they just don't care. I'm about to ask you, why, why is that? Why, why do you think our young I think it's a little bit of both. Have, don't, don't, have, don't, don't have that problem. Why you, like, we, we, we go get it. What, what's the, why do you think we don't have that issue? I think some of them are like, you know, uh, the, the Black Wall Street massacre was so long ago that they can't even relate to it. Some can't even relate to some of the stories that our parents shared with us or our grandparents shared with them. They have lived in a different uh, society. They've been taught differently, as we talked about in our previous uh, episode about Prager U. All this stuff is is different for them, and they're not necessarily being chained or or chained by the uh, the thoughts that we may have been passed down, so therefore, they're they're just they, they they don't they don't have the same limitations. For some, they don't have the same limitations. It's a it's a wide open scope. They don't necessarily look at themselves as being, uh, and I hate to use this word, handicapped by the color of their skin. They just look at them as some don't even see color. They like, hey, you know, I am no different than Johnny that I grew up with, that I went to the same school with, that I shared the same experience. As a matter of fact, I I can relate more to Johnny than I can relate to Leroy. So uh, I, I think that's <laughs> I, I think that is uh, one of the good things about the uh, our youth. Is that a good thing? I mean, I'm I, I ain't challenging you, but do you think that's a good thing that? Um, I mean, again, I'm not challenging you, but I understand where he's coming from. I think it is good in the sense of the freedom I feel that I can do stuff. There's no handicaps, but I guess it then continue to be far removed from our history and the stuff that we deal with. Is that necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, or is this how nature runs? Not challenging, just curious. Well, I, I think there's pros and cons to everything. If okay. if you look at history and you let that prevents you from moving forward, then it's it's a negative thing. If you look at history and say, hey, I see the pitfalls and I'm going to uh, look out for these pitfalls and avoid those pitfalls and be prepared for these pitfalls when they come, then I think knowing that history is going to help you move forward. N yes, knowing, um, knowing that the laws may come and be in place. Um, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I just had something to add to it. Keep going. Oh, finish, finish. Knowing that there were laws in place that when, when Black Wall Street was was uh, destroyed, there was no insurance. There was no all state that came in and, and kind of, uh, you know, help rebuild and all that other kind of stuff. And, and kind of knowing, you know, how laws work now versus with the, how they work back then, how they work now. 
you can kind of navigate and understand a little bit better. Even when we talked about earlier in the acts, Toya, uh, what, what Ron and Toya was saying is that, hey, if you're if you're butt punching outside of your weight class, you got to know that, hey, you got to have every, all your ducks in a row. You have to be prepared. And, you know, just, just having those mindsets from the history kind of tells you that. But then saying, you know, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway is is also part of that as well. So Go ahead, I'll stop. Um, I was going to say, this is where um, the education comes in as parents. And when we're we're um, having conversations, our church sermon was, um, the youth did something amazing yesterday. I said that, I think, um, for Black History Month. Uh, they did the song for Selma, but they acted it out. They had flags and everything. So it was just nice to see all these beautiful young people doing something. But the conversations that we have is like the same where my kids are that way where I'm friends with with Megan and Megan is my friend and me and Megan live somewhat alike. Actually, my house might be a little bit bigger than Megan. So why is it different? And then why do I have to be a certain way? But Megan doesn't have these are the conversations that you should be having so that your kids know that they can do whatever they want to do. And I think a lot of these young people understand that and move forward because they know somewhat, I'm hoping somewhat of them know the history and that they're standing on the backs of their ancestors. Because of them, they can. And so they're doing it in a, a hype and amazing way and not caring. But like, like G said, there's pros and there's cons because when you get hit in the face, are you able to bounce back or are you just going to fall and not be able to get up? Just, it all depends on what you were taught growing up. So I would hope that my kids will go out and ride for whatever it is they want. But they'll have that bounce back that my parents taught me to have because that's what I'm teaching them to have. Great conversation, guys. Great conversation. We're going we're gonna to park it there. We got a few minutes left for our last comments. I just wanted to end it, guys, by saying um, our history is there for us. To, if we don't continue to teach it, that I told you, said, in our school system, like Gary said, in dealing with dealing with society and building yourself up, and, like, and, and, and to pick it back on Ron said, to know that you can achieve and you can be better, um, I'm hoping that this dialogue can spur that because for some people they not may not know um, that we were successful in communities that we were we did make a lot of income and, and, and had very prominent infrastructure. So again, if the if the school if the school is not going to teach it well, we'll give you a taste of an over the top podcast. Uh, we wind it down a little bit. Uh, let's go with Ron. Ron, what's your last thoughts for the that night, sir? Um, just 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 this simple. Be clear the fact that, man, we've always pursued excellence in this country. I think one of the things that has diminished um, in our community is the, the pursuit of Black excellence. And I think we need to reinstate that. But in terms of reinstating that, we have to rebuild our families and our homes. Um, we have to make it okay for um, masculine energy to be expressed and accepted in those environments. And we need to get rid of some of these thought processes where we start talking about toxic masculinity because that's the only thing that that, that, that infiltrates our community is is that foolishness. It's not it's not it's not permeated in any other community. So let us let us work on being masculine. Let us work on being men. Let us work on being fathers. Let us as a community work on loving each other and be better. Good stuff. Um, Play make your last words. Uh, keeping in the spirit of uh, Black History Month, as well as uh, in the topic of Black Wall Street, uh, back during that time, it was a, a necessity to support Black businesses. Now that we have options that we don't necessarily have to just support Black businesses, we need to make it a point to support our, our own businesses so that the dollars can can stay and circulate in our communities a little longer. So if you have the, the opportunity, uh, please support Black businesses. Fast, fast. Toya, let your last thoughts. So this week for Black History Month, we are going to Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, to, <laughs> to the Woodside Bistro. Woodside Bistro is located in the village of West Greenville at the historic lofts 
at Woodside Mill, featuring salad sandwiches and elevated casual dining services with vegan and vegetarian options. So y'all check out the Woodside Bistro if you are in the Greenville, South Carolina area. And, you know, hit me up for more um, Black businesses that you want us to uh, support. Also, I want to say my other last word is educate your children at this time. Make sure that they know their history. They know where they come from. If you know your ancestral, um, you know, that some of us are not descendants of slaves. Not all of us are descendants of slaves, but some of us are. If you know that history, let your children tell that to, as our grandparents told us and their grandparents told them and I, great, I was able to be with my great grandmother who literally came out of slavery. Our generation is only two to three generations removed from slavery. So that is why it's important to us. But our children are not so much. They, you know, they're further out. So they don't go, they don't look further back like we do. Let them look back so that they know who they are. Miles along the same lines of your children, man. Invest in your children. Allow them to grow and try different things. Um, there is other sports than there's football and basketball. Let them in lacrosse. Let them in the golf. Let them in the tennis. Let them in the music playing. Told you do a great job of keeping up girls into everything. Not say everything, everything. Uh, <laughs> poetry, uh, whatever you do, but invest because I, I, especially men, if you're not with your baby's mama, that's fine. I'm not here to talk about it. my thing. Just invest in your boys. Invest in your children. And put time in your children. These our, our young men are out here fighting and shooting and don't know why they're so mad and angry. Ask, ask them instead of criticizing them. Instead of first thing you say, put your pants up. Ask them how this day going. Um, but anyway, that's the final thoughts on men over the top pocket. And like always, guys, may your next move be the game changer. Peace. <laughs>